Hi, I just want to jump in on this video to give a big shout out and a massive thank you to Rachel at Mini Wisterston Junction and Jason at Barnabas Junction. Those two have been a great help in giving me shout outs and my channel shout outs and have built my uh, subscriber numbers up to something that I never even dreamt of. I actually can't. I actually can't believe that I've got over 300 subscribers. I never even thought about numbers or anything about this at all when I started the videos. I was just doing it and I still do, just doing it for fun. So once again, it's a big thank you to all my subscribers because it's great to know that every now and again, if you ever drop in and watch the videos and maybe get a bit of interest and pass the time with them. So I hope I can make many more and I'll do a little bit of a a giveaway I think a bit of a thank you not sure how to go about it so I'll have a little think about it and it's time to get into the main video because I'm just going on and on here so I'll speak to you soon bye <laughs> Welcome back to Route 7 Railway. This is the June update and I think it's part 19 of uh, upgrades to the layout. Uh, this time it covers my very first attempt at making a mountain or a hillside but with a tunnel going through it. I showed you in the previous video I started collecting a set of four uh, Hornby anniversary uh, locos that came with a Royal Dilton plate and I only had three of them at the time well I've got the fourth one managed to pick that up and they're in great nick and they run lovely so we'll have a little running session at the end of this and you'll be able to see how they go so come with me downstairs into the train room and see how I got on with that my hill or small mountain with the sets of tunnels going into it. It's not obviously not finished. That's just the basic outline. Browned off with some cheap paint and I'll be putting coffee grounds on that. And and the joins, things like there, and the joins there, they're all going to be filled. These edges here, I'm going to put uh, rocks on the front there and maybe some bits of rocks elsewhere like where that's just suspended in midair, I might put some rocks going from the top of that tunnel portal there upwards and stopping halfway. I've got a mould kit for that. Taking a note of that, that's just I've just put that there for some for a bit of fun. So that that's the structure. I've got a series of photographs now just showing the progress of that being built from the foam structure underneath to the plastic cloth on the top and I, I've never done it before I'm going to see if I can put a commentary over the top of the photographs so we'll see how that turns out I must really lose the lot but there you go Right, here we go with the voiceover for the first time. Let's see how it goes. Bits of polystyrene all held together with hot glue. I can reach into the tunnels both ends and as you can see in the background I've also got a little access door cut in the wall that can come through from the other side to give me access to any derailments in this tunnel. Bits of the 10mm XPS foam, the purple stuff, you can see give me a bit of a framework and more pieces there held together with hot glue. That's the sides built up and the two green areas of the scenery there, they're actually pieces of old scenery from another layout that somebody just gave me and I've incorporated it into my hill. So the centre piece is being put in there now. Again, hot glued down, but they're all a bit wobbly, but the, as the more I fit, 
the more rigid it gets as you'll see in the next one I've been putting the cardboard strips just to cut up cardboard boxes all hot glued down to form a lattice and a rough hill shape and here we go with the first layers of plastic cloth love that stuff very quick to use goes off nice and quick great fun and that's the the hill complete nice and irregular quite happy with that and then I've incorporated the retaining walls and then just joined the, the scenery down to the wall at the front there so I can put some more static grass and greenery on there. Okay, so now I'm just uh, painting it with the cheap poster paint from Hobbycraft, doing it 100 mile an hour so you don't get cheesed off with it. And we'll return to this in future videos to see how, how things go. So I've just had a bit of a tidy up, all the rubbish is out the way and there are the anniversary Royal Dulles and Plates for that I said in the, mentioned in the intro. There's a certificate missing there but I do have it, it's just over there. I'm not one of these people that collects things and um, stuffs them in cupboards. I like to use all my rolling stock, all my locos and all the other bits and bobs and make use of them but I try and look after them at the same time uh, I'm not that type of collector nothing wrong with being the type of collector that collects the boxes and keeps them all in there but I I put most of my stuff into stock boxes and all the actual boxes are just stored back in the loft or something like that if I ever come to sell them or when I pop me clogs and the, as a custodian of these things they'll move on to somebody else so there's the actual locos themselves they're in great neck uh, which is a testament to the previous owners but i will be using them and we'll do a little running session with all four of these and i'll put some rolling stock on there i'm not sure i'll have the rolling stock to go around all four to make them absolutely typical but i'll i'll try my best back in a few minutes when i've got that sorted I've got the maintenance sheets for all four of these, but here's two of them showing the date, 1996, date of manufacture. They're 25 years old. I'm really pleased with them. They're just in brilliant nick and they're just like they've just come straight out the factory. Right, I've put uh, a few trains together now. I've tried my best to put uh, coaches that sort of match the loco but don't uh, shout at me if they're not absolutely accurate or anything like that it, it, this is just to see the locos running and pulling something reasonable nearest to us is Tombridge with a couple of cream and crimson coaches um, next to, in the line there is King Henry the sixth Great Western pulling a a couple of western coaches I've got City of St Albans the LMS pulling a couple of uh, Queen of Scots Pullmans and I've got Sir Ronald Matthews pulling some LNAR teaks. So we'll get them running. I won't have them running too quickly. And we'll get them running just to see them uh, plodding away around the track. I'll start at the front with the Tombridge. Now Tombridge, uh, all I had to do was service that, but it, it has got the cover on the tender is a bit loose. Tombridge 
the tender with being loose it can rattle at certain speeds but it's it's okay at that speed by the looks of it Okay, let's get the city of St. Albans going. Right, let's get Sir Ronald Matthews going with the teaks. What I'll do now, I'll bring them to a stop. Okay, <clears throat> I enjoyed that. All four of them running together as a set. Really pleased and they are just lovely bits of kit. I really enjoy them, I love them. And that's the whole point, isn't it? The whole point of the hobby. So I'll see you soon. next time. Bye-bye.